All right. Hey, guys, Mr. Kyle Myers Mathematics, and let's just jump right into it. I just have a quick worked example for today. Uh, it's when you have a double angle, or it could be a triple or quadruple angle. So if you've ever had cosine, sine, tangent, any of the trigs of something other than just x, so 2x, 3x, 4x, whatever, and then that's equal to something else, and how to solve it, and why there's four answers for this particular one and not just two like there normally is. So let's go ahead and dive in. So this is on the interval from 0 to 2 pi, including 0, not including 2 pi. Let's go ahead and look at what this would be here. So um, when they say the interval is from 0 to 2 pi, they're talking about for the variable. So another way to write this would be 0 less than or equal to x less than 2 pi. It's another way to write the same exact thing. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and do the first step of solving this thing. Well, if I had the cosine of an angle, the only thing that's the opposite of that is the opposite of cosine, which we call inverse cosine. So cosine inverse, cosine inverse of both sides. Cosine inverse cancels with cosine. I have 2x is equal to the cosine inverse of root 3 over 2. Now, I know what the interval for x is, but in order to figure out what the answer is here, I need to figure out what the interval for 2x is. I need all the answers of 2x, not just x. I have the interval for x. Well, if I treat this like an equation, and it you know kind of is, it's an inequality, I could multiply everything by 2, multiply by 2, multiply by 2. That would still be 0. This would be 2x. This would be 4 pi. So if I want to know what the interval is of 2x, it would be twice the interval of x. So from 0 to 4 pi. So I actually want all of the answers from 0 to 4 pi. Well, let's, let's look at what that might look like here. So let's do, this is going to be from 0 to 2 pi. And then we'll do another circle that's from 2 pi to 4 pi. Hmm, okay. So that way I have all my possible answers here. Okay. And I didn't draw really, really good circles, but it's all good. So if I want to know cosine inverse of root 3 over 2, well, there's actually a table for that. And I have a video where I show you how to make this amazing table. It's this really easy trig trick chart is what the video is called. I'll put the link in the description below. So go check that out. But um, once you've memorized the table, or if you can draw the table out real quick, you would know that the cosine inverse of root 3 over 2 is 30 degrees or pi over 6. So this is pi over 6, but that's just one of the answers. Pi over 6 is one of the answers, and it's the reference angle. This is pi over 6, and it's a reference angle of pi over 6. I want to know where the other place is on my red circle here where cosine is positive. Well, all sand tastes crumbly. All sand tastes crumbly. All things are positive in quadrant 1. Sine is positive in quadrant 2. Tangent's positive in quadrant 3. Right? So 1, 2, 3, 4. Cosine is also positive in quadrant quattro. That's why they're called quadrants, by the way. Um, because of the prefix. I don't know if you knew that. But you do now. So cosine is also positive. So this pi over 6, what would that be if I wrote that as a positive angle? Uh, well, if I went all the way around, that'd be 2 pi. That would be 2 pi, which is 12 pi over 6. So if all the way around the circle would be 12 pi over 6, then I could go back one to 11 pi over 6. And that would be one of my answers as well. So, so far I've got pi over 6 
and 11 pi over 6. If the way I got 11 pi over 6 was kind of confusing to you, another way you could do it is just to keep it in degrees until the very end. Okay, just keep it into the degrees. So pi over 6 is 30 degrees. You could do 360 minus 30 is 330. 330 degrees. 11 pi over 6 is 330 degrees. So you could just say 330 degrees. Just don't forget to change it back to radians before you type it into your final answer. So totally fine if you want to keep it in degrees, if that's a little easier, if fractions just really throw you off. Totes, fine. So on this next one here, this is a reference angle of pi over 6. But this circle is starting at 2 pi and going to 4 pi. We need to go all the way out to 4 pi. Our interval for 2x goes out to 4 pi. It's twice the interval. So 2 pi plus pi over 6. Again, 2 pi is 12 pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is 13 pi over 6. And again, you could keep this in degrees if you really wanted to. Um, it's 13 pi over 6. And I'm circling these answers not because they are the final answer, but because they are basically the final answer. I don't have the final answer until I've solved for x. And I haven't technically solved for x yet. But the very last step to solve for x is going to be easier than what I'm doing now. What I'm doing right now is the hardest part. So we want to do the same exact thing for this green circle. We want this reference angle of pi over 6. Well, 4 pi would be all the way around. And 4 pi would be 720 degrees. Then you would subtract 30 and get 690 degrees. So you could just say 690 degrees as long as you remember for your final answer to convert it back to radians. Okay, so 4 pi over 1, if I multiply by 6, that would be 24 pi over 6. And then I want to add 1 to that. So I want to add 1. So let me draw an arrow here, actually, because that's not the same thing as that anymore. Add 1 pi over 6. Sorry, subtract 1 pi over 6. I already added 1 earlier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Minus pi over 6. That would be 23 pi over 6. 23 pi over 6. So that's my other one. 23 pi over 6. All right. So all of those things are equal to 2x. All of this is equal to 2x. Well, if I want to know what x is, I just need to divide by 2. Or, or... Dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. Multiply by 1 half. Multiply by 1 half. Multiply by 1 half. And multiply by 1 half. If I multiply by 1 half, 2 times 1 half is 1. That would cancel. And now I have x by itself. This would be 23 pi over 12, which is less than 24 pi over 12 which means it's within my interval from 0 to 2 pi. This would be 13 pi over 12. This over here would be 11 pi over 12. And this over here would be pi over 12. So I have four answers because when I look at how many different quadrants have the answer, there's two in one revolution, but if I have two revolutions of a circle. If I have a 2x, I'm going to have twice the amount of answers. If it was cosine 3x, I'd have three times the amount of answers that I normally would have. All right. So that was a worked example for how this works here. Hope you liked this video. By the way, if you haven't gotten my awesome free guide, it's called the five math mistakes everyone makes and how to avoid them. You can check that out on uh, my website, myersmathematics.com. And if you want to like and subscribe and leave a comment about what other questions you might have on this particular topic or you could leave a question about what other things you're stuck on that you would like to see a video on just tell me in the comments below and i'd be happy 
to work out the next problem I do for you. And until next time.